Hi guys, and welcome to my new podcast, Sean Winter, Life Isn't Magnolia. Now my first guest is a warrior in every sense of the word. He's overcome so much in his life, beat so many things, continues to beat them. Every obstacle put in his way, he just simply knocks it down. He's an inspiration to everyone around him. He's a great man. He's a guy I respect most in life. He's a mixed martial artist, cage warrior. This is the unbelievable story of Aaron Aby. So before we start, please like, subscribe and make sure you share this story because this is a big one. So as it, welcome to the show mate. Thanks Thank for having me. Thank you for coming on mate. Your story's nuts in it mate. Let's be honest, it's, it'll pull on the heartstrings, this won't it? Yeah, hopefully, uh, but give, give people a bit of uh, hope as well. That's exactly why I wanted you on. As, tell me about the condition you were born with mate. So I was born with uh, cystic fibrosis. Yeah which is a, a generic, it's an inherited disease. So you get a faulty gene from your mum yeah. and a faulty gene from your dad. Uh, and it causes mainly problems with the digestive system and the lungs, because it, it, it uh, builds up thick, sticky mucus yeah. on your chest and in your stomach, which makes it hard to digest food, breathe, uh, and... Uh, yeah, so I was I was born with that. What was I grow, What was life like growing up with that, mate? Uh, I didn't really know any different, to be honest. Like, as I it was only when I started getting older, I started to learn more. I think I was quite fortunate with my parents that they just treated me as a as a normal kid. It's funny that I should say that because I've got down here your family because I know your family are massive to you, aren't they? Yeah, like, you, you've got an unbelievable family. Haven't you? Yeah, that's it, and that, and they like brought me up to. Just, just be normal and stuff. I used to think that everyone had to have tablets when they eat. Everyone had to go oh. to the hospital every four weeks. Yeah. Uh, everyone like had to have physio in the morning before school and then there be and that. It so was, it so was, that was every day. So, so every four weeks you got to go to the hospital. Obviously every day you're on these tablets, and every day before school, this is now you've got to have physio. Yeah, I'd have physio and there be wow. before and after school. Uh, I'd have to have tablets when I'd eat. I'd have to have. I was on as a kid, probably about forty tablets a day, growing growing up. Uh, wow! And like I used to say, I used to just think it was normal. Yeah. Uh, it was only as I started getting older and you get more aware that you realise you were a bit different to to everyone else. And I remember, like the big the big turning point for me was actually in uh, science class when we were studying it for biology. So this is in Darlin now? In, in Darlin. So this is secondary school? Yeah, and uh, like I, I knew then like everyone weren't taking tablets and stuff, but then like we went into it in depth uh, in science and like I remember the teacher uh, saying like life expectancy is 16 uh, years age and I, I remember like hearing that for the first time in science so, class. So the, the life expectancy with your condition is 16? It was, it's improving now, I think it's late 30s now. Uh, because your, your slogan's fighting to breathe, isn't it? Yeah. And we'll get onto that in a bit. Yeah. Like, that's just phenomenal. But did you always know that? So I take it your, your your diet and your nutrition was different to everyone else. Have you all, have you always been at it? Like I know your dad implements your food. And, yeah. so have you always been right at it, bang at it, like eating well? Uh, yeah. Again, well, so the recommended advice when I was growing up yeah. for cystic fibrosis uh, children was loads of calories loads of fat, uh, like any calories from anywhere. So my mum would make me like milkshakes with, like, and she'd blend like eight chocolate bars in them <laughs> with ice cream and everything. Honestly. Because, because of the, the, the digestive system, you couldn't put on weight. So wow. that's why you have enzymes with every meal so you can digest the food because we haven't got the gene that works properly to digest the food. Wow. So it was like growing up that I, uh, I would eat like loads of calories. And then again, as I got older, uh, and my dad was a bit questionable because obviously he had a background in sport and stuff and healthy eating. Yeah, he was yeah. Like, he, he's no. big on it, isn't he? Yeah, he's, he's like, you can't, he can't be eating all this every day and it'd yeah. be good for him. 
so I just started switching it and just started trying to eat eat healthier foods, still get calories, but from healthier foods rather than from like whatever I could. Uh, and now, like as as we've got older, the research and the advice is changing to eat yeah. healthier. Still eat eat plenty, but eat healthier foods rather yeah. than just whatever you could from crap and everything. Uh, and even when I when I was born, the advice was not to exercise because the lungs wouldn't be able to cope with it. Is that right? So, but now, in CF clinics and hospitals, they have gyms because they know how important exercise is. So I had a head start in that way, whereas I was like growing up playing every sport going. Yeah, because when, since I've known you from school, like we were both mouthy little buggers, weren't yeah. we? <laughs> but you'd know nothing better. Like, I mean, you know, we'd be on the coach going to football matches. Like you always paid for the year above. You, yeah. I always paid, you know, and yeah. you never, to look at you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have a clue, would you? No. Because so, you were so like active, mate. Yeah, it was so I felt like I was, I had the head start in that, in that way, whereas like, I would like football, running, cross yeah. country, athletics, like even roller hockey, things like that. So I was like, I'd love to see you play. Yeah, roller I was hockey. doing like every, every sport going. So, but now, like exercise is is a big part of people's treatment. Yeah, like getting the right food from the right places is a big part of uh, people's treatment. So I almost like started switching as I was growing up, and like obviously I did I did sport in college. Uh, went to uni, got a degree in sport coaching, which had like nutrition aspects. So I was, wow. I was like constantly learning. And then obviously when you get involved in mixed martial arts. So was it was it a time when your brain just like obviously you said it, like, your dad this can't be good for him. He needs to eat. And was it a time when you can remember when your brain just like, because I know you now, and I know what you like now, and like was it a time when your brains went that's enough of that, it's all goodness in my body. It, uh, a, a little bit, like I would obviously just start learning things and like chipping away and playing with things like I'd try this diet, this diet yeah, uh, and just like look into stuff and just, just keep adding little bits and and like I'm not like strict anyway in in like a specific diet like you, uh, but I've just like learned to eat healthy and... And you, just, and you research it all? Yeah like I always, I always think you need to look into stuff and also know that like what works for some people might not work for you. But I was doing the same with my tablet. So at one point I got that into it. I was like, oh, re researching this tablet. Oh, what's this wow. good for? Uh, what's the side effects of it? Can I get anything else? Because that was a thing I was finding as well, is that uh, some of the, the health implications people get as they get older were yeah. negatives from some of the tablets they were taking all their lives. Yeah. So like I was trying to like, if I didn't need a tablet, I was trying to like wean wean my way off them and stuff like that and just uh, keep progressing through it and just evolving. You've always had a, I think since you were a kid, you've always had a really stubborn, strong mindset, haven't you? Yeah, like, yeah. And that, like and we're, we're going to touch on your mindset now in a yeah. bit and it's just fucking, it's another level of strong, but even then, did you know you're like, you've always had that mindset, you've always, because you're a strong guy, aren't you? In every sense of the word, you're a strong man, like. I think, it's, again, you just, you you have to cope with things growing up. Like when when you when I'm getting like these problems growing up, it's almost like I'm training a muscle to be stronger. So I'm having to train my mind yeah. all the time, and like having having people around me who can help me as well. But also like learning how to cope with stuff because some of the things I've been thrown at it's either like sink or swim, sink or swim, uh, and there's times where. You know, I've I've always said, like I've said in in other interviews, I've just had to bite down on my gum shield, walk walk forward with whatever's thrown at me, and yeah. and look to come out the other end because there's no other option. So I think, like obviously, growing up, it was like I, I had parents who were like, "You never quit. Like you can lose, but you never quit." I love uh, that. Like what, watching Mighty Ducks. This. Rocky, See, I, this, this is what I say to my, my Charlie and I'm, I'm my, so like my Charlie just won't play the season by the yeah. way. I've always been like, it's all right to fail. It's not all right not to try me. Yeah. It's just not all right to do that. And I'm like, if you lose a ball, doesn't matter. You go again. You get other opportunity. If you miss the man, yeah. you'll get him next time. Yeah. Like, and and I, I'm like, and, I, and I'm gonna Charlie's gonna watch this with me, and he's gonna learn exactly what I mean. Yeah. Like I tell him, I said, you've got a fire in there because you're my son, and I want him to watch this and realize. Yeah. Like it's kind of like this. 
I want I want people all over the world to watch this as and realise just what you know, bite down on your gum shield and walk through it yeah, like. Yeah, hundred percent. And like I was like, I think that I had cystic fibrosis and life, and then I had sport. So as growing up as a kid, like I was obviously football and other sports. Football was my main sport, but then I like things would relate to me that like. My dad would say, doesn't matter if it's 3 0 to go, it takes a second to score a goal. So I'd yeah. be like, oh, I'm, I'm going to keep going. And he was like, I love that. Like, the ball's not gone out of play. Like, if it was rolling out of play and I knew I wasn't going to get there, you'd be going for it. it. I'd be going for it because that, that to me meant more than just letting yeah. it roll out of play. And like, I, that's what I always think. Uh, and I say the same about fighting, like, nothing's more true. Like, fighting and life relate. And I, like I always remember, show show me the fighter, I'll show you the person. Show you the person, I'll show you the fighter. Yeah. Because I like to fight how I live as well. So like I, when I'm going in there, I'm giving it everything I got. Yeah. I'm constantly moving forward because that's I want my fighting to be an expression of who I am. And I wow. think like growing up, I had cystic fibrosis, so I was dealing with like hospital visits, like uh, problems, problems with health and stuff. But then I was also learning through sport and cystic fibrosis. So again, even when I played, I'd like to think I played like who I was. Yeah. Like I, You're I, a tenacious I would, player, weren't you? Yeah, Football. and I would always hope I'd cover more ground than everyone else and yeah. I'd always be working harder than everyone else. And uh, just, just, just through that and just developing that, and that developed my mind, Back going back to your original question, like it just developed over time and just because it had to, but also because I was yeah. learning and had that, that openness and, uh, to to do that really well. Well, when you played football, I mean, I've played with you a couple of times. I think we had a couple of arguments on the pitch. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I, think he, I think he threatened to kick me head in once, and I was like, <laughs> "Well, we're doing me." Um, and you did cover every blade of grass, and you were some player, mate, weren't you? You know what I mean? We we've, we've we've been lucky. We've we've played with some players yeah, at that time, haven't we? Yeah, we have. Like obviously, it was a thing. I think like we had. Some, we had almost like that the golden generation we, yeah. of Wrexham. And then around us were some bloody good yeah, players, the, mate. And we, we were at Wrexham. I was, I was at Shrewsbury and then Wrexham at the end, but like obviously we were at Schoolboys Wales yeah. and, and everything. And you had trials at Man United, didn't you? Yeah, so just 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 obviously just growing up around the, those people, I think obviously our school years, the three years, yeah. were like winning everything. It was ridiculous, mate. Um, it was it was it, those for yeah. years. It was flipping ridiculous, mate. We yeah. were just cleaning up. So, well, it's cops. Um, so like, obviously, we we were played it, but like, football was was a big part of who, who we were growing up. Because I remember, like, that's that's why obviously we had that game where our mates would play your mates. I was going to bring it up, and me and you yeah. used to organise that. Yeah. You get on to me, and but and they used to turn a bit nasty, then, yeah, didn't they? But, uh, I, used to, I used to buy in the beds when I was young, up <laughs> top, just to, just to top us, mate. Yeah, but again, that was just like who we who we were. It was like we were we were all so competitive. I mean, I think. I mean, you got some. I'm going to come on to your mates in a bit because yeah. you've got some absolute pearlers, mate. And the twins are going to get mentioned, by the way. <laughs> you, you, honestly, mate, you've just got some of your mates and some of the. I'll go on to the people who support you after. But like, we were all dead tenacious. Like we were yeah. all like we were we we like in the summer we just go on a nine acre or whatever. You get a team, I get a team, and it'd be fifty cuffs, mate. Yeah. So it'd be, but, and it was only just a friendly, but we wanted to win so much. Yeah. And that was the thing. But that was because like who we were as that generation <coughs> growing up. But the yeah. thing is now, like, and you're going to get onto it later, they're still my mates, they're still your mates. And if there's not many people who have those same group of mates all no. the way throughout life, that would do anything for each other. Yeah. You know, like, th those, those groups through school and everything, they're the, they're the same people who, who yeah. are there now and they just keep going. Especially and yours, certainly so yours are, yeah, it's, yours it's, are tight. It's, yeah, it's, are... It's, 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 a, it's, a, it, it's a special bond, but again, like those three years, I would say, you know, uh, they were just the same type of lads yeah, through I, every I, age. I definitely That's why agree. sometimes when we played football, it would get fist. It was naughty, so, wasn't it? Yeah, someone throw in a bad tackle and there'd be someone, someone. there <laughs> yeah, yeah. would be like, oh, you can't do that to my yeah, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it would just escalate from I there. I never but, thought of it that way. But then after and the game, right. it'd be like, oh, well, yeah, play yeah. same next week. We'd love it, yeah, yeah. And that's what it was. <laughs> yeah. We used to play next week. That was, uh, I was thinking about that before. And it's a class memory. I'm going to move off football. How did cage fighting or mixed martial arts come about for you? Uh, so uh, at the time, I went to Wrexham and I was, I was, I was on part-time 
uh, scholarship there, so like three days a week at training, yeah. two days college, uh, doing sports science. And my uncle, Julian, uh, he used to go out to America every summer to train, like six weeks, oh, go class. out, train with Eric Paulson uh, every year. And then when he'd come back, though, there was no one doing it around here, mixed martial arts. So he would like either have to like pull a mate in to do some drilling with, or like go and do individualized like boxing and and yeah. everything. But he just started taking a class for uh, cystic fibrosis. Oh wow! So he just he would take the class. Everyone would go pay two quid at the time, and all the funds would go to cystic fibrosis. He'd save it all year, and then we'd yeah. hand the check and hand it in. So I just started going to that. Uh, so obviously my dad was training Julian, and I was like the youngest there at the time. And like all the local doormen and stuff were doing it as well. So I was like, found it cool to be around them and yeah. everything. And again, it was just, it was hard. So I, I loved it because it was competitive. Like I was yeah. trying to wrestle these big doormen and everything. And I was obviously a lot smaller than all them. And like two nights a week become, oh, can we do next session? Are you, you, you kind of, are you that used to being up against it? You kind of like it in a way? Yeah, I do. Yeah. And sometimes like it's like I've been in bad positions in a fight and I could maybe scramble a bit sooner than I have, but I'm like, I don't mind getting punched. Uh, which is, which, 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 yeah, which isn't a good thing. Uh, that's the competitive edge yeah, in you, isn't like, it? Yeah, and that's what I mean. Like, sometimes I get offered fights that people think are tough for me, but they motivate me more maybe than a fight that wow. I get offered that I should win. But I just started, like, going, going that way. And then with my mixed martial arts, it was like, it was... You know, it was coming like I'd take a fight and then I like wouldn't play football for three weeks before in case I got injured and yeah, everything. I remember. It just started taking over and stuff. Uh, and then I was learning about nutrition, which was helping with my health. Yeah. Because I was getting I was getting healthier with my cystic fibrosis uh, through that, and I felt like with because when I played football growing up for Wales and everything, and like we'd go away for camps, I'd hide the fact that I had cystic fibrosis. Oh, I would like man. sneak tablets out my out my pocket and uh, and stuff so nobody could see because I didn't want to be picked. On you wanted to be picked be on merit. Yeah, I didn't want to be picked because of it or not because of it. Oh wow! Uh, but then when I went to mixed martial arts, obviously my first fight I had cystic fibrosis on my t-shirt. I wanted to raise awareness, raise money for cystic fibrosis. I'd like sw switched my yeah, approach, yeah, yeah. Uh, but because the results were down to me as well. Well, the thing is, if you're in that octagon, you ain't there on merit, mate, you're actually going to yeah, fight. Yeah, and that's no, what I mean. No, 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 no one gets in no. there on the sympathy vote, yeah. mate, because it can't happen. And the result is based on me. Of course it is. If I don't need a manager to pick me, yeah, yeah, or a coach maybe to like me, yeah. it, it's up to how I fight. If I win, that's down on me. If I lose, that's down on me. Uh, so it, it just ended up suiting, suiting my personality a little bit. A little bit more, but you know, don't get me wrong, mate. I still miss football now. Yeah, uh, and it was was my first love, but mixed martial arts was just again, I think, the most real, realist thing to who I was. How dedicated do you have to be to take that up? Uh, you have to be very dedicated, and you have to have a good mindset. Obviously, I, I like coach a lot now as well, and you need you need the ability to. Like, because everyone starts off at the same level. Like, nobody turns up and is automatically yeah. good. So yeah. you have to go through that stage of getting beat up all the time, yeah. tapped out all the time, being sore. You know, like the the pros who I'm training with are, are training twice a day, six days a week, uh, having, having a Sunday off and stuff. Uh, it's, it's constant it's... because as well, you, you, it's not just like, for example, boxing where you're learning one discipline it's and then everything. you can go, yeah, you have to do your boxing, your kickboxing, your jiu-jitsu, your are, war work, are you your like, MMA are you, war work. You must be mentally absolutely just on the floor sometimes because you've got to think of so much, haven't you? Like you've just said, you're, it's not just stand-up fighting, is it? No, it's... Like, it's you've, you, if you switch off for a second, you're on the deck. Yeah, it's, it's, it's everything about, like, obviously the mindset you have to learn. Yeah. Uh, you know, you need, you have to be on it with your nutrition. You're still doing your strength and conditioning in the gym. So, so it's everything. So, you you at you know they some people say it's the toughest toughest sport in the world, and it's because be, of, isn't it? it's because of how much comes with it uh, that makes that makes it that hard. So your first 
How many fights was it you went unbeaten at first? Because it was a lot, wasn't it? Yeah, well, I, I was 16 and 0 as amateur. Wow. Uh, and then I, I that takes some doing in that sport, doesn't it? Yeah, it got, but it got to a point where I was fighting like the weight above and stuff. Well, just so you could get a fight. Just so I could get a fight, and then obviously it was, uh, coaches were like, "Your time ready to go pro." Uh, and I had like a quite a, I had a positive positive start, but it was like I think I went three and one. Uh, yeah. And I thought, you know, because when I went pro, because my amateur record was so good, I was already in fighting like top 15 guys in the UK and stuff. Wow. Uh, and then I, I think I went on, I, I don't know, you think, I think it's nine, but I think it, I went on a good win streak uh, at a good time. And, and that's professional, mate. Yeah. That's so uh, good, And man. again, when there's so many different different ways to win fights and stuff, it, it, it was good and something, something I'm... Uh, I'm proud of, but yeah, it was. Uh... Now let's just say something about the support you get, mate. And I'm yeah. flipping. I, I've been meant to come to a few, and I just haven't. Someone's always come up, and it's fucking. You know, it's a bit of an excuse, yeah. mate. And it's one thing I've always said I really want to do. I keep saying it's a bit the best. Uh, I'm dying to see him fight. That support you get, mate. They're nuts, aren't they? Again, it's. Uh... They give you some, a hell of a backing, mate, don't yeah, they? Yeah, it's. It means a lot. I know it does. Like it, it, and it like you know. Even just, for example, uh, I remember the, the cage where I was Manchester fight st sticks out quite a bit uh, because I was weren't meant to win that fight, like I was a big underdog, and I remember like I was walking down uh, the aisle or whatever it's called yeah. to, to the fight, and I'm seeing all the lads from school, yeah, like yeah. Uh, everyone. There. They're, they're right behind you, those boys, yeah, aren't they? And mate? I'm like. I'm not losing in front of my no, boys. No, that's class. Uh, and it just ma makes a difference. Obviously, I've been in tough fights uh, and I can hear them singing. Uh, they sing their hearts out, don't they? Yeah, they sing their, you know, and that's what I mean. That like I'm, I've been fortunate to to grow up with a, a special special bunch of people and, that, and have that great support from like. I'd say, I'd, I've always said this. I think you've got a special group of mates, mate. Yeah. You know what I mean? I yeah. think I think you're all I think you're all a great group of lads. Um, it's going to take a bit of a turn, this, Aaron, and then you got cancer. Yeah. What type of cancer was it, mate? So I got testicular cancer. Uh, that ended up spreading to the stomach and the lymph nodes. Go on, talk me through it. Uh, so I, I was having a, a big fight at the time. It was a rematch with uh, a fighter called Danny Misson. Yeah. And he, he beat me in the first the first fight. Uh, and after it, he'd said some things about like cystic fibrosis and yeah, uh, you are joking and, and me, no, mate. just 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 stuff like that. And ah, come on, mate. Uh, we ended up getting the the second fight uh, at the time, and obviously I was I was in the build up, and I was I was having pain. I remember I rung the coach on the way home from a boxing sparring session. I was like, oh, did I take a low blow? Yeah. And he was like, no, not that I know of. I was like, oh, I'm, I couldn't drive. I was like, I'm struggling in pain here. Uh, and he was like, just go and get yourself checked out. So I remember I went to the gym because I was coaching first. I coached, yeah. but I couldn't think of anything other than the pain. I uh, ended up going to the hospital and they were basically, uh, oh, it's just a water infection. Like, take these antibiotics and, uh, you know, come back like see how you get on i didn't take antibiotics because like i said i don't want to take things willy-nilly anyway yeah uh, and i thought they'd done no bloods or anything and then like uh I, the fight was like two three week away and i remember the week of the fight the pain wasn't constant it would like go come back go come back and i was out it started going in me back as well and i remember thinking maybe it's stress because it's a big fight there's been like yeah. a lot of talk up to it it was on a big show acb uh, there was like UFC talks after the fight, uh, depending on the results. So I thought maybe it's just stress. Yeah. Uh, I ended up winning the fight, and then I went and got checked out again. Uh, and the, the guy was like, "Oh, it shouldn't be more infection la lasts this long." He's like, "We'll do some bloods." So, so with all this pain, you fought. Yeah. You beat the bugger. Yeah, and then I've gone back. Uh, yeah. I've had I've had the tests. Uh, they got me in for a scan and they were like, oh, you've, you've got tes testicular cancer. Uh, we need more scans to see, but, see how, 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 far it's, uh, how far it's spread. 
Uh, and then that was the, the start of that journey, really. What was, I mean, talk, talk me for you. I mean, how did you break it to your family and... That, that telling me my mum was uh, probably the hardest thing because her mum was going through cancer at the yeah, time uh, and was coming coming to the end. So that that for me was was the hardest thing. I think I I put it off. Yeah. Uh, and just kept putting it off, and then obviously. Uh, me and Hayley said, said to Mum and Jez, or uh, my stepdad at the time, yeah. uh, can we have some food with you? And uh, I don't think they thought we were going to tell them, yeah. tell them that, but I remember, like, my mum obviously broke down in my arms, just saying oh, no, 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 and stuff. Uh, so that, 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 that was obviously hard, because even I was a little bit in denial at the time, because I was but like... Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I remember I started paying private for my own scans, because I was yeah. like, oh, no, surely not. Yeah. I mean, I'll how can get... you take that on board? You can't, can you? Yeah, I was like, I'm, I'll go and get my own, my own scans, because, like, I, I did think, oh, I've had cystic fibrosis, I can't have cancer as well. Yeah, I'm not having it. Uh, but then, again, it come to a point where it was biting down on my gum shield, and and let's uh, let's fight it with Mate, everything. you're talking, I'm, like, the hairs on my arms are standing yeah. up already, and it's, it's going to get better. Um, what kind of treatment did you have to go through, Oz? So again, it was uh, it was really hard for me to commit to the chemotherapy because I had a hospital appointment every Wednesday in, in Liverpool Hospital, and I'd go with my uncle uh, and some and my dad, and I'd sit down there. Uh, this was like over like a three three month period, uh, maybe even longer, and they they get the form that I'd have to sign. Mm. Uh, to commit to the chemotherapy with all the negative effects on it. And, like, every time I'd read the one about me lungs, I'd be like, I can't do that to me lungs. I've spent, like, me whole life, yeah. like, looking after them, trying to make myself as healthy as possible. Uh, so I'd say, I'll come back next Wednesday, and I'd go away and I'd, I'd think about it. it again, and yeah. I, I wouldn't do it, and I kept going back, and that was, like, repeated over time. And then I, 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 was, I went training one day, and I went back after training. I was sitting in my garden, it was hot like it is now, and I had my top off. Mm. I remember lying down, and there was a big lump coming out of my stomach. Yeah. And I was like, oh, Fuck what me. is this? So I was like, I'm going to have to, like, go and get this checked out. So I went for a scan, and that was a mass in my stomach uh, that ended up getting 13 centimetres. Uh, and they were like, listen, you're a, I'm a, my nurse come to see me, my CF nurse, Jam. And she was like, you've got to decide you have the chemo yeah. and we support you as best as we can. Yeah. Like, we don't know what will happen with you or we give you end of life care. And it's basically, we just see you through and make it as less painful as possible. And you ain't having that, you mate. Uh, so I'm like, all right, so the next day, straight in for the chemo. And it started that, so I had five days of uh, 16 hours on, eight off. Fuck me, man. Uh, and then I'd have two days off, uh, two days and two weeks off, and then I'd go back. So I had four lots, I think it was, of that. And uh, my blood markers came down and everything. And I was wait, I was all good. And then during the time, I was waiting for an operation because they had to remove the lymph node and yeah. the mass from the stomach. Yeah. Uh, and during that time, the cancer come back. So I, because I, I, and I knew because I had the same pain come back in my back. What did you? You, and, you knew straight and away. And I was like, oh, I think. Uh, something's happening here with me because I was I was waiting because it was Christmas at the time and New Year and they were like oh we we're delaying yeah. operations like and I was like I, like you're joking aren't you so I it come back in January uh, and then I went back in and they ended up saying right you need more chemo and again they give me the form. And I did sign it this time, but it was worse chemo than they give me because of how much it had spread and because it was coming back so fast. Uh, and that was 20 hours on, 
four hours off, five days, two weeks, two weeks off. But after the second lot of that, I was meant to have three lots. They were like, if he has any more, he'll die. Fuck me, uh, He was like, his, my lungs had got dropped to like 40%. <clears throat> uh, I was weighing 49 kilogram. Uh, they were like, we can't give him any more chemo. So th they wait a couple of weeks before they test your bloods and give you a scan because the chemo still keeps working after you've had it. It's yeah. not like an instant, it's like two, yeah, three yeah, yeah. weeks. Uh, and the blood markers had come down, but I still needed the op because obviously I've, I've got cancer in my testicle, cancer in my stomach, cancer in my lymph nodes. But where it was in, my, uh, in the lymph nodes is where blood goes to and from the heart. And it was like, right next to that valve. So only one doctor would do it in the UK. Oh my God, that one. Uh, so I, I was waiting for this uh, Dr. Patel, uh, or surgeon Patel, who was in Birmingham. I went to see him. Uh, and he, he said, listen, I'm gonna do it. This is how I'm gonna do it. He goes like, I'm the best at what, I'm do at what I do. He was like- That's what you, you yeah, need to hear that. That's what I has. did. He you need like, to hear that, mate. Nobody else would touch this. Uh, I remember he used an analogy, he said, are you into football? And I was like, yeah, he was like... I like this guy already, what's yeah. his name? Uh, Dr. Patel, surgeon I hope Patel. you're watching yeah. this, Mr. Patel, yeah. mate. Yeah, he was like, he said, oh, you could have Ac you could play for Ackerton Stanley. <laughs> or I think he said, you could play for, for Liverpool. He goes, I'm Liverpool. Fucking love this guy. So I was like, oh... Uh, Go to work, no. Doc. Uh, he was like, we're gonna get, get you booked in and do it properly, so... At the time, my lung function was 40%. Uh, I was weighing like 49 kilogram. And it, I think it was booked for like four weeks. So I remember like thinking, right, what can I do now to give myself, because I was going to be an, under anaesthetic for so long. Yeah, and yeah, they yeah. don't like putting people under CF with anaesthetic, because obviously the lungs don't work well anyway. Oh, and it shuts everything down. So I went straight to the gym. I was in the gym. I was like, right, how can I get my lungs better? quicker so I was on the rowing machine I was I was doing everything I could I was trying to gain weight and before the before the operation uh, I got my lung function back from 40 to 70 percent and I put oh, on like man. six key wow because uh, I thought they, they were the things I can control I can't control what happens on the day because he said to me this was the night before the op like I went down uh, with my uncle and he sat in a room and he said Listen, there's risk of crossing the road with a lollipop lady. There's risk of uh, yeah. crossing a 30 mile per hour. He goes, tomorrow you're crossing a motorway blindfolded. He said, I might open you up and this cancer because Do I- Do you still believe? Uh, you, do, you don't know at the time, I always had hope. But yeah. he, he said to me like, I might open you up tomorrow and there might be cancer in your spine and we just close you up and it's end of life care. Because I hadn't had a scan for like oh, wow. four weeks from the last one. He said, wow. he said, I might hit that valve and you're not gonna come out the operation. Yeah. Uh, he's like, these are what you're going into tomorrow. So like at Birmingham Hospital, it was that. And obviously my, f my f close family stayed over. My cousin was there, Owen, uh, he come down as well. and. I went it, they planned for a 16 hour operation. Uh, so all, all like, I'm just going there and uh, he, I come out, obviously I didn't know what had happened, but they said it was for four hour op, operation in the end. And they yeah. went to see uh, like my parents and everything. And they said everything that went well could have gone well. So they obviously come tell me I'm on the recovery. I'm thinking, oh, yeah, uh, that's it. I'm, I'm done, uh, and then like three days later, I end up getting pneumonia, uh, inf lung infection. So I got moved. Sorry, Ad, but at what, at what <laughs> point did it become, become funny, mate? So, so Give this guy a break, yeah. innit? You know what I mean? I, I got moved from uh, Birmingham Hospital to the CF unit yeah. uh, in Broad Green, who I'm under. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm thinking lung problem, get me to the CF team. And Jan, I always refer to her as like my guardian angel now because she was the one I'd, I'd like rung up. Like she was the one who come see me and said, listen, Aaron, you can have chemo. We'll fight as best as we can. Or uh, 
we'll give you end of life treatment. She like didn't put me under any pressure to do any of them. She just supported anything. Yeah. So she like become like the guardian angel and they got me to her in the CF unit. And within two weeks I was, I was in the gym. Uh, I was on the running machine. At what point did you tell them you'd fight again, Az? I was telling them all the way through. I heard uh, that. I didn't want to put words in your mouth, yeah, but I heard I was, that. I was telling them all, all the way through, but I remember like <laughs> two two weeks after the op, because uh, I had I, I had a I've got a scar going from here yeah. all the way down here, uh, and I said to my doctor, I said, "Can I go home?" He said, "The only reason I'm saying you, you can't go home." is because it's impossible for you to have recovered in two weeks this quick. And you'll be straight to the gym. Uh, but he said, any other than that, I can't give you a reason not to go home. Oh, wow. So I shook his hand, I said, thanks, I'll stay in touch, and I left that night. Uh, but for me, and like I, I said earlier, when you said about the, uh, doing this, and you said, yeah. you know, I said, hopefully, it gives people hope. This is why I, this is why I want you yeah. on, and I'm going to go into this at the end. And uh, uh, for people watching, like, <clears throat> so this podcast, Your Way to Life, isn't Magnolia's because I have my own struggles, but in comparison, to nothing. And there's plenty of people like me who have problems up there, and this is the guy I want it on because I mean, if you're not inspired by this, you never will be. But let's just go back to Aaron for a second. Um, yeah. Right, so obviously Haley's brother Aaron, who he, he's my best mate as we were kids, and uh, he said, "Well, he's only thinking about fighting again, isn't he?" <laughs> I said, "No." He said, "Oh, he's fighting." He goes, "And he will as well, the bloody idiots." Um, but then I've been told by like, you're like you've told everyone, nurses, everyone, I'm going to fight again. Yeah, because for me, obviously, people were telling me I I can't, and if you tell me I can't, I have to. But also, it was my hope. Yeah. And I feel like when you're going through rough times, because life's going to be shit for everyone. Yeah. Everyone's going to have to go through tough times. Like, I'm not going to sit here and tell anyone that, you know, they're going to go through tough times and they're going to be okay. They're going to go through tough times and they're not going to have negative thoughts because I'd be lying. Like, it's about biting down. Yeah. And, getting and having that bit of hope. So for me, the hope was fighting. Yeah. The hope was being able to fight again. So any any time I'd be having a tough day, I was clinging on to that hope. That's why I was telling people I'd yeah. fight again, and they were telling me I was mad. But that was, <laughs> we knew that anyway, doesn't it? Yeah, that was for me was my hope because everything kept getting thrown at me, and you know there was there was days I locked myself in a room, uh, and a dark room, and just cry. And I and the thing is as well, a lot of the time I was I was on my own because everyone was working. I couldn't go training. Yeah. That's why I ended up getting a dog. Uh, it's a lovely dog as well. Yeah, it's a great, it's a <laughs> life changer. But again, he gave me hope. Yeah, fighting gave me hope. So for me, cancer wasn't over until I'd stepped back in the cage and competed again because I didn't want because of everything I'd done in life to look after myself and and like get to a high level in sports and look after my lungs. Yeah. I didn't want to get back to just existing after it. I wanted to get back to where I was. And so to get back to where I was, I had to compete again. As, Alan, tell me about, you're good to go, you're feeling strong, mate. You've arranged the fight. Tell me about that first camp, because you must have done that with a smile on your face. Yeah, so they, they told me nine months till I was back training and sparring. But I was fighting after nine months, which in hindsight was too soon. Yes. Uh, looking back, because I didn't eat, I ate breakfast and still weighed in. So I was probably like 10 key lighter than the guy I was fighting with yeah, on yeah, the yeah. night. Uh, but I, I, I got myself a physio straight away. Uh, Vicky, who, who I was close with, and she knew me and she knew how to manage me and she would like yeah. set me targets. You can't go do this till you've done this. You can't do, do that. So I was going through the processes. Uh, all the time and I remember like people around me even coaches at the time they didn't really want me to fight either no again or at the, at the time I don't think anyone wanted to I don't think no. anyone around you wanted to did they uh, but I, I, I like I said I had to and I made sure I was getting to my targets that I had to and I remember one of my uh, coaches now and training partners at the time he, he had the conversation and told me this with my dad after the fight and he was like I'm sparring light with him 
I don't want to hit him like hard. Yeah. Especially in the stomach. Yeah. And then my dad said, listen, if he's going to fight... He's going to fight. So smack him in the stomach <laughs> as hard as you can and see if he's ready. Yeah. Because that'll uh, tell you... About, yeah. And as soon as he basically said that, that to Steve at the time, and I was obviously in the MMA Academy with Jason and that, they all like come together and, and it, it was a collective thing that they were going to get me get me ready. And like I said, like those guys had done done so much for me, but it was like, right, if he's going to war, we're all going, we're to, all war. going to war. Mate, with I've him. got goosebumps here. Yeah. That must be a special feeling, having that togetherness in that camp. Yeah. We're all like, we're all going to war. I mean, I mean, if people aren't watching this inspired already, but tell me what that first, because I know you had, you had all the supporters there, they were all there. Tell me that first ring walk, how, how did that feel? After you knowing, cause I'm, I watched it, I got emotional watching it, mate. Like, I always say to you, fuck you, you know. Like, that ring walk, when you walked out and you thought, this is what I was hoping for, this is what I mean, I would, yeah. you, you must have felt like you won. That, that, just getting to that yeah, point, that mate. was, that was probably the, Again, I spoke about Cage Warriors Manchester, but that for me was the most intimate and like proud feeling because when I walked out, it was I was main event, yeah. so like a lot of the other fans were left, and I, like everyone I could see had been through that journey yeah. with me. Like even my physio was there, uh, and and everything. Like people who had mopped up my sick from chemotherapy, people who had picked me up from the hospital or, you know, people who found me like when I fainted, they were they were all there. And the Braves have that, played a big part yeah, for you, haven't they? Like we, we, said, haven't, we haven't mentioned the boss no. yet, Hayley, have we? Uh, I know you, you've got an incredible girlfriend and, a, they, and their family, like I've grown up and they're amazing, aren't they? And I know I mean, they've done so much for you. And like I've been sick in their house time and time again and someone was there to help me, they'd they'd feed me and like we'd be having soup on someone's birthday because I couldn't eat anything else. Proper that though, wasn't it? being sick. That's and, proper, mate. And they were all there in the crowd and like, hey, his mum and dad, they don't come to, to uh, I think that was maybe their, their only fight that they've yeah. been to, maybe a couple more, but that one was, was special for me. And when I walked down the stairs and I could see all them in the crowd and, and everything, I was like, this is a collective effort to get us back in there. You got a special night uh, for you. And that, that, was a, that was a big night for me. But even, even that, and I spoke about earlier, wanting the fight to, to represent who I am. Uh, a fighter. In the first round, I win the first round. In the second round, I get 10 eighted. So I have a bad round, yep. getting close to finish. So I'm going into the third round, needing a finish, or to win the round after I've almost been stopped in the second. Yeah. I win the third round, it ends up a jaw. So again, I said to me dad after, and I said in the interview after, and people still play it now, I was like, my life's not meant to be perfect, <laughs> but it's meant to give people hope. Cause the fairy... Did you burst into tears on that? Yeah. I'm, yeah. I watched it, mate, I cried, yeah, mate. I, I'll be honest, I watched it, I cried, mate, and I was just like, sorry to stop you, I was just like, I think I messaged you and I was like, this, if this isn't an inspiration for anyone, yeah. you know, and I think and I think when you broke down in that press conference or whatever, and I think everyone felt that with you, but but they were tears of joy as well, mate, because you got there, mate. Yeah, yeah, but like the fairy tale ending would be me winning, coming back after cancer. Like a fairy tale, isn't it? But it ain't a fairy tale, and I think that that's what I mean and my win-loss ratio isn't as important to me as the people that I help and the people that I can affect and the people that I can give hope to. So when I get a message after I've thought about a parent with cystic fibrosis who's just the world, had a kid it? and they just say, listen, I was all doom and gloom and I've seen your story and, and, and that means more to me than whether I win or not. And I remember, like, after that fight in the, in the, in, in having the interview after, like for me, like I wanted that fairy tale ending, but when it said and done and I get a draw, I'm like, right, that's me all over. Because life ain't perfect, life's, no. life's gonna be tough. But again, I went into that third round and I still managed to grind out and get a win in that third yeah. round, no matter what happened. And, hope, and the most important thing, because I needed hope, 
and I found hope is that hopefully I can give people hope as well. Aaron, I think you do. Uh, I gotta tell you, whenever I've been down in the past, I think of you, mate. Yeah, watch, I'll watch your stuff. I'm telling you, and I promise you that, mate. Hand on my yeah. heart, mate. I'll watch stuff on you. And I've told you this before. I might go to Aaron Aby or something, and yeah. I'm just like, fuck me. Um, but since so since then, you fought. How many times have you fought since then? Easy. Would you just come back from Dubai? Look at the talent, yeah, lad. Six, seven, eight, I think. Eight, eight, mate. And you've got no intention of retiring anytime soon. No, not soon. Like I said, I'm I'm competing against and against the best guys. Uh, over the world, I'm, I'm, I'm doing well. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm not slowing down or anything. And you've still got the same mates from you since day one, lad. Yeah. On the last one, I think everyone will agree. What I do want everyone to do once you've watched this, I want, I want this to be shared all over the world. And I know my friends in America, Australia, and everywhere, we want to get the story out. Um, your advice to anyone, Aaron, who's struggling out there right now, what's your advice to them? Just find a bit of hope. I feel like, like I said, life is tough. It's not Magnolia, is it? No, it's not Magnolia. <laughs> and uh, as long as you can find a bit of hope, and at times you're going to need to fight, and that's the only thing you can do. Uh, and just just finding that because, like. Like people say, there's there's light at the end of the tunnel, uh, and you just need to keep going through all that darkness until until you can see it, and then when you can see it, you just got to keep reaching for it. As you're an absolute legend, mate, and I think you're going to be overloaded with good comments for this. Yeah. Thank you so Thanks much for, for sharing on, your story, mate. We appreciate no it. Cheers. Yeah.